let's spin the wheel. Today we are building the worst volume controls ever in view. And this was heavily inspired by this article right here, which has a lot of cool examples of bad volume controls. Um, so I've picked five of them for part one. So we have volume based on our location and coordinates. We have this thing here. Whoops, sorry. I'll just stop that. This one here where it basically you have to rotate it in order to change the volume. A simple a random volume. And here you have all the options from 1 to 100 so that you can change your volume with radio buttons. And lastly, this spinning wheel to adjust your volume. We will be using uh, view, view use and tailwind in order to create this. And hope you guys enjoy. If this video gets enough likes, we'll make a part two with some other uh, and creative ways to adjust your volume. So without further ado, let's get started. So in front of me, I have a new vid project and what I've done is I've selected the view and TypeScript template and I've also installed a couple of things. I've installed the view use library. In order to install that, you can just uh, type in in the console npm install and then uh, view use slash core. So, and then you'll be able to install it. Uh, as for Tailwind, um, you can go to uh, Tailwind Vit and then follow along with, um, yeah, with the setup steps. So you can install it. And then uh, I've also installed one uh, Tailwind plugin, which is called Tailwind Clippad and registered it in the Tailwind config. I've also used uh, the public folder to upload the video, which will be, of course, the recro video. And in the app component, for now, we just have uh, a simple hello and nothing else. So let's get started with uh, the template. Um, so the template will be something like this. For now, we don't have volume, but um, yeah, let's just hard code it for now. So we just have like two divs, which will later be used for uh, just con containers. Then we have a video element, uh, which has a ref, a video, and we'll use this ref uh, later in the setup to get the reference back to the video. And then under that, we have uh, a place just to show the volume as it changes. Uh, so then back in the setup, we can uh, actually define this video ref and this video ref yeah it will be sorry it's not here it's here so const video and it will be a ref of uh, yeah, html video element or no we can import a ref from view like uh, this and later on we can also now get the volume using um, using the composable provided by view use which is called use media controls and we can just set it to use media controls and it accepts a video and also some options like the source so for the source we can say that it is uh, a rick row mp4 and now the last thing is we need to import this and we need to import it from view use core all right now if we refresh and last thing we can do is actually bring back this value here to be the volume we get and now we can see here that it's one and the reason it's one is because the volume is a value between zero and one 
So in order to display it properly, we can just use mat floor and then uh, multiply the volume by 100 and that will give us uh, yeah the volume and you can see that it's changing as well. As for styles, um, I'll just uh, paste them real quick but first of all we make the background darker and the text white. Uh, we also make it flex and then for the second container uh, again we make it into a column and center the items to give some padding and so on. Lastly um, we also give a class to the volume to make it larger. So we just say text Excel. Okay and this is the basis of our um, of our project and now we'll go on to build on the different volume controls starting up with the location based one in which we'll get the location from the user and then use the coordinates to uh, set the volume to one of those. So let's uh, continue. Um, we have the video now and one other thing that we can do is here under this we can paste in uh, like a different section which we want on the left and basically in this section we will have uh, the different controls. So for example I will just make a simple outline here. Uh, so the idea is that we have the video on the left and here on the right we will just have some uh, control and we can go ahead and create a new component here which we'll call location volume.view and here we can just init a new um, init a new component so this will be the location based and now if we paste it here location volume and we also need to import it of course um, oops sorry location volume from components location volume. Okay, and we have it here. So now in that component, we can go ahead and basically what we'll have here is a diff. Oh, uh, sorry. We have this diff here. And then we can say initial volume is based off your location. And then we can um, give the volume and we can also say latitude which will be latitude and now we don't have those but we can go ahead and create them. So we can say here we can create a new variable here called volume and we can just set it for zero for now. Let's import the ref and another cool composable we can use is use geolocation. So we can just say like um, we can get the chords, coordinates and we can use geolocation. And this will basically ask the user to allow a uh, location on his browser and after some uh, a couple of moments we'll be able to get the coordinates and we can actually display them here this will be chords latitude and we don't see anything here oh no we see okay so you can see now localhost wants to know your location if we allow it and give it a moment
Yeah, so you can see now latitude 51. And the idea is that we basically round this up and set the volume to this value. So what we can do is um, actually let's add here some break lines so that it's easier to read. Okay, and after that, we can actually, um, we need to watch for the chords value changing. So we can use a watcher and then we can just watch for the chords and then we can do something with that and we can basically So we need to set the volume to be equal to the around it. Uh, yeah, so we around it and then use the coordinates. Oh, let me disable copilot because it's getting in the way. So value and we get it based on the latitude. And we also divided by 100 because I remember the volume is from 0 to 1. We just display it uh, times 100 yeah, because it's easier on the eye. And here we want to emit it. So let's import this and let's also define what this component will emit. So the way we do it in uh, view, uh, view 3 and script setup is we can declare a variable emit and then use the define emits uh, function. We can basically, why is this still not disabled? So we disable it and here we can actually say, um, we wanted to have an event, which will be a volume changed. And then we also wanted to have volume, which would be a number. And all of this needs to be actually placed in curly braces. And then we can actually call it. So now in order to emit it, we just go here and we can use this variable that we've created. We can say emit. And you can see that, that the types are already inferred. So only so option is volume changed. And then we pass in the new volume value. Cool. And now here, um, we don't have a method to actually change that. So let's create it now. So handle volume change. And it will basically uh, accept a volume, which will be a number. And it will just set the volume value. Sorry, we should name it something different. So volume value is equal to the past in new value. Great. And then here, now we have this uh, volume changed event and we can just handle it using this function. And now if we refresh, we can see uh, now it will pick up our latitude and the volume is set to 51. And I can play it. Hopefully it's not too loud. Yeah, you get you get the point. And this looks a bit strange because it's not full screen, but otherwise it should be it should look like this. Okay. Moving on.
So let's continue with the next component, which will be the slider. And I've already created a new component and added it into the upload view. And for now it's empty, but let's try to build it. So first of all, we'll have uh, this div here and then I'll just paste um, two icons. So we have this SVG right here this one and we also have for volume up okay and of course now this here needs to be uh, we need to give it a class of flex flex a row and I'll just copy the others, maybe. Okay, so now they're in the middle and now we need to add in the input. So in between those two, we have the input element. And basically it will be like this. So just a regular input. This will be a range, I believe. A range, we can set the mean to be equal to zero, max equal to be 100. Or actually, wait, we'll make it one and then make the step 0 0.01. And we'll actually make it disabled. Because we don't actually want the user to be uh, be able to drag it. Cool. Now we also add some uh, classes to make it the way we want. So I'll just add this. And basically now it has this wider border. And now we need a volume element. So let's go down here. Let's create volume. Sorry. Uh, in the script. Const volume will be equal to. To actually be a computed value and in this computed we'll actually use the syntax for getting and setting so we can use get here and it will just basically return the volume for from props now let's import this and we also need to define the props. So how we define props is similar to the emit. We say define props. Then we can specify what type of props we want. And here we say that volume will be a number. Okay, and the last thing is to actually initialize. Okay, um, and here it's complaining because I think it needs a set. And when we set it, we want to actually emit this value. So before we do that, let's also define the emit. I'll actually just uh, copy paste it. So the emit will be ba uh, basically the same as the other one. It will just emit an event called volume changed. And when we want to actually set the uh, volume, we will just emit it so that we can set it in the parent component. So we just uh, do it like this. Uh, same as the previous component. Volume changed and then the value. Cool, cool, cool. And what we can do now is here we can 
put the V model and actually bind it to the volume. Now if we refresh, it doesn't do anything yet, but uh, it's bound at the middle because it's 51. So now let's get into the part where we actually make this move. We will need a couple of um, variables. So let me just uh, create them here. So um, what we will need is this here. So we need a rotate, a rotation limit, which will be the angle. Uh, this will be used later uh, when we want to interval it. So it, um, when we want to set up an interval and then gravity. And we need to actually get control of this element here. So what we can do is say, um, volume control, it will be a, a ref of this and you can just set the type. Uh, and this volume control, I believe we need to set it up as a ref as well. So here in the big one, we can actually say a ref equals volume control and we can actually make at two events so at mouse down we'll handle mouse down and at mouse up we can handle mouse up we don't have these events uh, and functions so let's create them now so this is the function for the handle mouse down. So we get an event and don't mind this for now, but basically we get an X coordinate. Then we can get the uh, bounding client from direct. Basically this one. And if it doesn't exist, we just return it, but we get the center. So we do this in order to understand if we've clicked on the right side or on the left side. And if we've clicked on the uh, left side, then the rotation should be counterclockwise. And if we've clicked on the right side, it should be clockwise. Um, and currently it doesn't do anything because on mouse up, we don't do actually anything. But what we can do is add a style to the parent component right here. And basically based on this rotate variable we have, we can just transform the whole input so that it's rotated. And now you can see that it rotates, but on mouse up it like it's either this or this. So we need to actually now calculate on mouse up and on mouse up, here is the function. So we clear the interval and again, this will be used when the actual ball is falling, but we just basically reset everything. And in order to uh, make the ball move, we need to watch the rotation value. So let's just uh, create a watcher and we're watching the rotate value, so, and then based on that, we can do some stuff. So what we do when, when the rotation is changed? Well, first we need to see if it's uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So if it's, if it's clockwise, we can do a couple of things. So basically we can set an in interval. Uh, remember we had this variable cre created up here. So we set the interval to a new interval. 
and in this new interval we can do the following uh, so first we need to check the current volume if it's less than one we need to stop the decreasing and here we can see just a couple of edge cases but basically we can just do volume dot value plus equals and then you can say gravity times the rotation value and so basically now when we turn it you can see that it actually moves by one I think yeah so it moved a little bit but it doesn't actually uh, oh well, wait because we forgot here to set up the at what so it only happens once but if we add here no still no why are you what's your date value okay okay hmm So if it's under a hundred, then we add it. Should be fine. I don't know what. Why are you not moving? Can we see in the console? Mm. Oh, because, uh, yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. So we said that here in the volume it's computed and we get it from the props, but we actually haven't passed in a prop here. So let's just pass in the volume, which will be the volume and now it should be working so when we it starts a hundred and now when it goes back to 51 and now if we yeah it goes back to the, okay so now we need to implement the other logic and account for the edge cases so what we can do now is um, here we also need one more check and it will be if the current volume uh, if we add to that the gravity times the rotate value if that value is greater than one we basically just uh, set the volume to one And else, we just do this here. Cool. And now let's also do it for the other rotation value. Um, so if the rotation value is below zero, then we're counterclockwise. And we basically do the same stuff. We check if it's um, negative and then if it's less than zero then we set it to zero otherwise we just um yeah add into the volume what we have here and now if we do this we can see that it actually is working and the volume as well changes um we can test it now be prepared for a bit of 
a little bit of loudness starting now and yeah now it's at zero and i'll <laughs> need to edit that but yeah and this is how we have the slider component of course you can extend this by adding also acceleration which will make the bow uh okay can you So you can extend this component by also adding acceleration, which will make the bow feel a bit more real. But this was it for the slider component. Now let's move into a shorter one. And uh, that will be the uh, random uh, volume component. So let's get into it. So here we have the random component and because it's kind of simple, I've already done it. But what you can see is we basically have one button that will change the volume. And when we click it, we want to actually just set it to a random value and math random by default will give you a number between zero and one, which is exactly what we need. Then again, we uh, get the props and the emits um they are the same as the previous components and when we set the volume we want to actually emit this event and back in app.view we can see that uh, when we emit this event we basically change the volume and now when we click it we can actually see the volume changing and the good the nice thing is that we actually see the slider change as well because it's using the same value. So that is pretty cool. And now we can move on to the next, which will be the um, big list of radio buttons. And now it's time for the radio buttons. I've already created this new section here and the basics of the component. So uh, going back, we'll have uh, again we will just set up the props and the emit just the same as before. And then we can have this um, select your desired volume. And here you can see we set up a grid which will have 12 columns and center the items and have some padding. And next up we add the label and inputs. So we loop over each index in 101 and um, that's because it will start from zero and it will no it actually will start from one which is uh, and we need to go from zero to a uh, hundred and then basically in this label we will show the index minus one so it, from zero to a hundred and in the input you can see it will be of type radio and when it's changed we will actually emit this volume and uh, what we actually emit is the um, the selected index divided by 100 and next up we also have this selected value and this will be uh, the computed value of the, the volume we have uh, times 100 so that we can actually at startup have that selected already and we can say that the input will be checked so as you can see here um, so the input will be checked when uh, the selected value is equal to the uh, index minus one and the initial value is the selected value so now if we save that and make this a bit larger and if we scroll down so we can see the volume was set to 51 because of our location and automatically in this uh, menu here it's uh, 51 is selected and we can go ahead and 
change it to whatever we like and we can see that the volume actually changes. If we actually play the video, we can see that it is it is actually working and we can change it to whatever value we like. Um, and this was it for the radio buttons. Next to up, we can go to the volume wheel. So moving on to the uh, volume wheel, I've also added it here in the upload view. Um, for this uh, component, we won't be needing uh, the prop. And inside of the component, you can see I've added uh, this label here, spin the wheel to adjust volume. And I've also already defined the emit, which is the same as the in the previous components. Uh, so now we can go on and build it. Uh, first of all, we'll need um, to create a div underneath here, which will have a class of relative and will be the main base of our um, wheel. And then we can create another ref inside of that. Um, sorry, I meant an, another div. And we'll use the template ref to actually uh, give it this ref of wheel. What we can do then is we can uh, actually define this wheel in our setup and it will be uh, a ref of an HTML element. So, oops, sorry. So we import those uh, here and for the ref values, we can actually set them here. So we will have eight values um, and they're randomly chosen, but we have zero, 35, five and uh, whatsoever. And one important variable that we also need is the de degrees, which will be initially zero. So if we go here, um, you can see here from the uh, tailwind classes, so this is also relative um, and it's uh, basically has a border and it's uh, a circle. Um, so inside of this wheel, we want to have a couple of things. So let's first add the, uh, the button. So we add this button at the end. And it's basically just a, a circular button. It's basically just a circular button that um, for now we don't have this let's spin function, but we will create it. And as for the classes, it's um, absolutely positioned based on the bigger circle element. And here, yeah, you have to play a bit around with the absolute positioning, but I think 43% uh, from the top and left seems to be about right. Um, and another thing that we've added here is this animate spinning. And in order to do that, we actually need to go into our tailwind config. And here, remember, um, we need to extend it with a few things. So if we go into team and extend, we can do this right here. So we can go here and is it correct. So we can extend our team by adding a new animation style. Um, so this spinning will, have, will be overall six seconds and it will be infinite. And as for the animation, it will just scale it up a bit into 1.1 and then scale it down. So it will be like a pulsating. Um, and here we also extend the clip path and these are all the clip paths for the uh, different uh, wheel values and how you can actually get them. There's a really neat site that you can play around with, but you can go to clip path generator and from here on you can experiment with different values and basically cut some shape in some way. 
and then just copy this here and these are the values that I found worked pretty well for my case. So we add this into our tail and config and save and then if we go back we still don't uh, have the uh, the different values so we can start adding them uh, and for now we'll just ignore this one so let's add the different spans um, and we can do it like this we'll have uh, a simple div here which will contain all of them and the first one will be like this So this is the first one, um, we give it a width and it's absolutely positioned, we give it some, uh, set it to red and we set it to the clip pad that we've created. Um, and then in the p tag we actually put in the value and again position it with the uh, absolute positioning so that it is roughly in the center. And now it looks bad, but if we actually go into like a normal screen size, you can see that the first piece of the wheel is done. And I will just uh, copy the others, but the main logic is the same. You just replace them with the uh, positioning so that it matches. And if I paste them here without the div, and you can see now that our uh, wheel is actually uh, looking pretty nice. Um, of course, the source code for this will be posted on GitHub. So don't worry if some of these tailing classes you don't get uh, from, the from the video, you'll be able to just uh, get them in the, uh, in the source code. So now we can actually go on and implement this um, let's spin so let's go back into our script and what we can do is say const let's spin is equal to function and in this function the way we want to do it is we'll have some random value of uh, degrees which can be over 360 of course and that will be the spins and some other degree so we can just say um, that the minimum value can be x or actually we can say like min and then the maximum value of spin that we might want to have is um yeah some some number and then what we need to do is to calculate the degree we just um, set it up as uh, we need to floor it into the, uh, a number and then we just use the math random to calculate some random value of spins that we might want to have so we can just say like this and then we can say like this and if we just print it uh, out somewhere so if we go in here or actually below this one So the degrees is currently zero, but if we click spin, we can get 9,000, 7,000. And basically this divided by 360 will be how much this spins. So let's just remove it for now and continue on with the function. Um, so the divider will be 360 because it's a circle and then because w oh yeah one thing we forgot is actually to know the little triangle 
So let me add it uh, as well. So just before the um, just before the spin button, we can actually add a class which will be absolutely positioned. It will have no width and height, and but it will have borders, and each border will have like a different value, which essentially makes it a triangle, and this will basically center around and see which is actually chosen. But if you see, it's in the middle. So if we uh, divide 360 by 8, we can see that each one of these occupies 45 degrees. So, but it doesn't start from here. It starts from actually here. So we need to actually divide it by two once more. And if we go into our function, we need to account for this offset, which will be just, um, yeah, just the divider, divided by two. And this divider, we said that it's 360 um, divided by the number of values we have on the wheel. So wheel values dot dot length. Okay, so this is 45 and this will be 45 divided by two. So what we can do to actually get the value that it will land on, we can say wheel value. And basically what we need to do is divide um, modulus divided by 360 so that we get the remainder of the big um, the big num number so we eliminate the spins and just get the actual value that this thing has traveled and from that value we can actually know where uh, where it actually has landed so the way we do this is um, to get the value, we have the values here and on which index it will be, we get by um, doing the mat floor and then we do, it, we do a mat ceiling. And in this mat ceiling, we actually sum up the uh, degrees with the offset. And as I said, we uh, module divided by 360 to get the remainder. And lastly, we uh, divided by the divider. Now this wheel value, if we want to actually display it, um, if we want to display it like uh, here, wheel value, Oh, we actually don't have it in the outside scope, so it's fine. But um, we'll just see it in a, in a, in a second. Um, and when we have this wheel value, what we can do is we can to do the actual rotation. If it exists, we can get the whole wheel and apply a style transform to it so that we rotate the whole wheel by the number of degrees that we have. This includes also the spins and what we can do is because the animation will take uh, one second, we just uh, set a timeout so that the wheel value changes exactly when it lands and not before. Um, and yeah, right now, Maybe we can actually set this to, yeah, we can set this here to const uh, wheel value. And it can be like uh, whatever, zero. And then we can just, uh, just assign it here. Uh, 
okay and also here and now if we want to display it underneath we can say wheel value so it's zero and if we spin it you can see it's 69 but we actually I think we spun the wrong element so this I think needs to be outside maybe okay yeah so now it's 69 and if we spin we see 69 50 69 25 and 75 and let me just show you what happens if we don't have this timeout here. So you can see we start spinning it. Oh, it does. So it starts spinning it and it instantly changes. But um, actually, wait, wait one moment. We forgot to actually emit it or no? Let me just see. Handle volume change. Okay. So it should be setting the value. Fifty. Okay, yeah, it sets the value, yeah. And if I remove this what you can see is, oh, I mean, if we only have this without the set timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't have the set timeout and we just emit it. Look what happens. Um, so it starts spinning it and it changes to whatever it will land on before it actually lands on it. So you see 50, but we need to wait until the end. And that's why we have this set timeout here. Cool. And if we play the video and now we spin it, we can actually see that it's, uh, it's changing the video. So this was all from me. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment if um, you want me to cover other uh, volume controls. And yeah, that was it. And see you next time. Never gonna give you up